All right, now let's talk about bounce to track. Bounce to track is pretty different from bounce to disc in that you are actually going to be bouncing all of your selected tracks uh, down to an audio track in your session. So you'll be able to see it as it's bouncing and it'll look just like any of these other waveforms right here. And there's uh, several reasons why you want to do this, but before we get into the benefits, uh, let's let me show you how to do it. All right, so here we are in uh, a track we've used before. You're familiar with that, I'm sure. I've added a master fader because anytime you bounce, you want to make sure that your levels are good. And this one ran a little hot, so I had to bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so first thing you need to do when you want to bounce the track is you have to create the track that you want to bounce to. So I'm going to go track, new, and I'm going to create a stereo audio track because I want this uh, the final mix to be in stereo. So there it is. It's audio one. We're going to put it last. And I'll rename this bounce track. Okay. So now that we've created the track that we want to bounce to, we need to get everything we want to bounce into this new bounce track. And the way that we do that is we come over here to the audio output path selector, and we're going to change uh, the audio output path selector for each track that we want to route to our new uh, bounce track. And the simple way to do that is let's just highlight everything we want to send over to the bounce track, hold down Option Shift, and set it to any available bus. We're going to use bus 1 and 2. And we also want to do this for the uh, master fader. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. The reason I didn't include it is because the Option Shift, does, uh, option shift command doesn't work on the master fader, neither does the, the Option, which is the Do To All modifier. So let's go over to our bounce track and set the audio input selector to bus one and two. We also want to rename this and we'll rename it bounce bus. As you can see, it changes everything labeled uh, bus one and two to bounce bus. By the way, you should leave the audio output path selector of this bounce track set to your main outs. Okay, so now that everything we want is going into this track, let's flip back over to the edit window. And we are going to arm this bounce track and start recording. You can see the waveforms. This is this is our track. Okay, now what you would normally do is just go through uh, the entire song or however much you want it, but I happen to have an already bounced out version over here in the regions list, so I'll just bring that in. There it is. Now the final step in bounce to track is coming over here to the regions list and selecting the, the region that corresponds with this bounce that you just made. Uh, as you can see, it is all it was already selected I'm gonna select it again so that you can see all right so and all you need to do is go export regions as files and you should be familiar with most of these settings or if if not all of them um, set them to your liking choose the destination fo folder and export so let's talk a bit about why this is more uh, so why some people like this better than bounce to track. Well, one reason I like it better is uh, it, this doesn't so much happen anymore, but Pro Tools I used to be notorious for, you, you know, you get all the way towards the end of your bounce to disc and uh, not bounce to track, but bounce to disc, which is real time. Then it would stop for whatever reason, like the computer would just be overworked and it would exit out of your bounce to disc. 
So what you'd have to do is go back in and bounce the disc all over again and listen to all four minutes of your song and pray that it didn't stop um, before the end. With bounce to track, that is no longer a problem because even, no matter where it stops, let's say, let's say it stopped here and we didn't get everything we wanted. Ah, it cut off. So, no problem. All you need to do is start bouncing from uh, somewhere before it left off. And since this is a perfect digital copy that you have right here, you can just hit record and start going. It'll write over it. right on going so now let's listen to it and I'll listen to the part where um, I started recording you hear there's no can't hear a difference at all like I said it's a perfect digital uh, copy Another great thing about Bounce to, to Track is what if you wanted to change a part of your song? What If you wanted to change just one little small, small part, when you're bouncing to disc, you'd have to rebounce the entire um, track all over again, even if you just wanted to change one second of the, of the song. You'd have to rebounce the whole thing, which takes another four minutes. Um, but let's say I wanted to get rid of this guitar part. First, let me play it so you know what it sounds like. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go down here. Let's mute this track. And I'm going to disconnect this from the bounce bus. I'm going to put it on the main out. Solo it up. And you'll hear the guitar part. OK, so that's the part you're listening for. Now, send it back to the bounce bus. Connect it again, if you will. All right. Now, I'm going to delete it. And we're just going to record that part over again, just that one little part, instead of doing the whole song. So here's where the guitar should come in. No guitar. You can see that it's rewriting it. Let me stop it so you'll be able to hear the difference. No guitar. But we didn't finish rewriting it, so in a second you'll hear the guitar come in. There you go. Now that is so much faster than having to bounce the entire, you know, four minute track all over again. And those are just a couple of reasons why I like using Bounce to Track.